Okay, we are recording. So welcome everyone to our weekly Hangouts meeting, where we just hang out and talk about whatever comes to mind, whatever we're interested in. So we don't have a formal agenda and all topics are welcome. So you're a very good speaker. <laughs> Thank you. I, I love speaking. I speak too much sometimes. <laughs> Put me on a stage and I'll entertain the crowds. <laughs> uh, I wonder if we should talk a bit about the decision model and this thing that has raised in the mailing list with respect to the communication methods for the diversity and inclusion working group. Or whether we should better discuss it into the mailing list just to avoid having a, you know, a side discussion here. What do you think? I think it makes sense to continue having the conversations that we have here within the weekly call, because that's what the call is for. But I think we should also make sure to send a summary to the mailing list. And the difficult part that I see is when we discuss something on these calls, be it a decision or just a general conversation, it could feel like it's set in stone once it gets posted as a summary to the mailing list. And so I don't know how to make sure that everyone on the mailing list knows that, hey, this conversation is still ongoing and you're also welcome to participate and join in this and decision making process. So that's that's one thing I, I see as an issue. So I'm, I think that up to now I've been working uh, based on consensus and that could be a good, a good thing to keep. My impression is that usually the meetings like this call are for talking and uh, based on this talking some proposals came out and in some cases some idea of we have a consensus on, on this maybe the only trouble is to consider that people not joining the conversation in the call for any reason agree with that so my impression is that if we frame the results of discussions in this call as proposals for the rest of the people we can just see whether in the mailing list people agree or not if they don't say anything at all, well, they agree, that's fine, we have a consensus. Otherwise, we can go on with the discussion either in the mailing list or even in a specific call or something like that. But I like this mixture of uh, discussions in the mailing list, chatting and conversation, and trying to find out consensus in the call, because in some cases they agree that it's easier to just talk and uh, find out a solution than, you know, message going, message back. And... Um, yeah, I would agree with that. And I think I think it's really easy to fall into the trap of having these meetings and thinking that thinking that we have consensus on decisions and, and acting as if, if we do, because I know I'm I'm certainly guilty of that because we you know, we talk about things and we come to decisions and it's like, oh okay, we decided that. But um, but we didn't really. A subset of us discussed something and came up with a proposal that the wider community should you know, have time to weigh in on because that's, that's a hard part about um, about communities like this is that, you know, not everyone can attend the meetings, not everyone's present every single, every single day on the mailing list. And so we do need to give people time to kind of turn through things and, and give feedback and make, make decisions. And it's, uh, um, yeah, it's easy to fall into the trap of, oh, we decided that um, yeah. just because a, a group of us did. Any more, any more opinions? So is the idea that discourse would be used for decision making within the community and then the discussions happen elsewhere? Is, is that no, what the other? No, this is a whole separate discussion. Okay. I like that you bring discourse up again because I am still <laughs> not over that. I, I still would like to have discourse, but in fact, it's a meta discussion on top of that, right? I gotcha. So we are uh, so reflecting the on the discourse conversation and how we made discussions, and then Emma had posted on mailing list 
uh, asking what is the decision making process in yeah 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 more generally okay. in uh, in regards to the use of discourse are we are we talking about work groups being able to use it or are we talking about moving the entire community to uh, to discourse if we're talking about work groups being able to use it then I think you just let the works groups decide individually uh, I think there needs to be some clarification there though so one one of the things that I think uh, we need to decide is whether every working group can decide everything they want or there is some common rules for the whole uh, chaos community. Up to now, honestly, I don't think we never discussed that. And the uh, groups have had a lot of autonomy and every group had to, basically they said, oh, we're going to do this and that's it. So nobody objected. Maybe this is the first time that we are trying to raise the discussion to the whole chaos community to some extent. And uh, honestly, I don't know, this balance between autonomy and having some kind of common rules is always difficult in communities. And um, I don't know. So I would, like, I would like to have some channels where I now I can be informed of everything that happens because in many cases I cannot participate in the discussions, but I, I, I like to know what's happening. And I think I'm subscribed to all the mailing lists related to chaos because of that. But on the other hand, I, I also realize that in some cases, some working group for some specific task may prefer to use something else like discourse in, instead of mailing lists, for instance. So <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it, we it, it almost we sounds kind of... like. <clears throat> Go ahead, Ben. It, it almost sounds like we need some sort of platform where we any, any sort of decision that comes up in discussions with the community can just be posted. You know, one like say, just going back. Sorry, so sorry to bring this up again, but to go back to the discourse, we could have some sort of thing that is posted that says the community wants to move to discourse. Do you agree? And people can like upvote or downvote, and um, and that would give you consensus on items. I, you can almost do that in GitHub, although I'm I'm a little hesitant to create like another GitHub repo for doing stuff like this. Um, but I think if we could implement some sort of system where we can just provide a simple thumbs up or thumbs down, like. Mm, uh, um, in, in general, if we start to do something uh, similar to voting, we need to discuss who has the right to vote. And that yeah. ends in, um, in a difficult decision. So that's why, in general, I prefer consensus for exceptions. In some cases, you cannot reach a consensus. And apparently for that, we have the board. So if we, don't, if we cannot reach a consensus, we could discuss in the board and vote in the vote. Um, a different way of working would be defining how you became a part of the voting members and then vote with, between the voting members instead of voting in the, in the board, for instance. And that could also be nice. But, um, well, usually I like to avoid that because, you know, that, that makes somebody is going to push for being a voting member and stuff like that. And we are not that large. So we are just a handful of people. So, Right. Yeah, I tend to have a preference for consensus versus versus voting for a lot of the reasons that Jesus sort of mentioned. Yeah, I'm I'm right there with you. And I think lazy consensus is sufficient. So maybe I have not reached lazy consensus yet because I keep pushing for discourse. <laughs> <laughs> if you go back to the main list discussion, I'm not convinced entirely, but I'm okay with shutting up. Uh, but, but maybe in the mailing list we can have two separate discussions. First, try to clarify this idea of uh, whether everybody agrees on trying consensus as much as possible and considering the decisions made in the calls and so on as just proposals for mm -hmm. decisions. That people in the mailing list can also uh, say, I don't like that or whatever, and try to find out whether we really have consensus and sticking to the board as the last resort for voting if needed. If at some point that doesn't work, we can try to find out, as, as Ben suggested, other ways of voting by having some people with voting rights and, and stuff like that. And uh, I don't know, maybe that's something that we could even um, devote some time to discuss in the next uh, Chaos Con so that we can have a more open discussion about this. But for now, I think we are not that many people. Consensus should work, I think. Yeah.
And Great. we have used voting tools in the past. For example, when we voted for the code of conduct response team, we did use a tool to do that. So in general, even for voting, just saying in the mailing list plus one, minus one, things like that is usually good enough. It's easy to count when we are just a handful of people and everything gets recorded. So maybe that's good enough. We don't need a specific tooling. Mm. Yeah, I like the transparency of the plus one, minus one okay. approach in the mailing list because then we have the tally always in our archive. If we do it in a separate tool, then we don't have the history. Hmm. But there are some cases where anonymous voting is needed, and then we can revert to other tools. Yeah. Yeah. I like the proposal to make everything we discuss on these calls a proposal and make that clear in our summaries that this is only a proposal. And also the way we talk about it on the calls that we keep in mind, hey, this is not the whole community deciding right now. This is only us, the subset, and we'll move this proposal to the main list. Uh, in, in any case, there was one proposal that I think we didn't implement that was having something like the first meeting every month is let, let, the, the, let's say uh, the formal meeting so that we may have an agenda and items to talk about and so on. And even when the decisions are not made, people may know, well, this item is going to be talked about. I can say before that in the mailing list, my opinion, even if I cannot join the call or after I can uh, contribute with my opinion, whatever. But people may know that of all the meetings every month, the first one is mostly for talking about anything that could need a decision while the others are most for chatting. And uh, that could also make a difference because if you need to really talk about that, maybe you can do an effort and join the meeting if that's important for you. And uh, maybe that way we can get more um, involved people uh, joining the meeting if they know that it's, this is going to be talked. And those first, first Tuesday of the month meetings, those are always well attended. And I think you have a good point there that by having the agenda and letting everyone know, know in advance that we want to come to a consensus on a topic and that if they cannot attend, please talk about it on the mailing list. Yeah. Then, yeah. Uh, and, and make that a bit more explicit because I think that right now there is nothing in writing where people now the first meeting of every month is for this kind of stuff. Let's say that the formal meeting. So. Okay. Anything else with respect to all of this about making decisions and all of that? Okay. I, I wanted to share with you uh, what we are doing in the GMD working group, just for you to know very quickly. The most interesting thing I think that we are doing is collecting the use cases. So those are pull requests and issues in the um, uh, in the repository for the working group. It would be great if you can have a look at them. Um, have a look at the procedure. The procedure is in the directory use cases of the repository. And the, if you look at the procedure is basically starting with an issue where we should be collecting commands based on a description of the use case. And everybody having any interest in using metrics or an experience in using metrics in using metrics can submit a use case. Use cases are specific. They don't need to be generic or something like that. It's like, I would like to have this kind of information. And the idea of the use case is to set up the main goals. What kind of information do you want to have? Uh, what for? And stuff like that. And then try to structure that into a set of questions. From there on, the idea is that the group tries to find out the metrics that would help with that. And that's the way of completing the use case. And then with those metrics is what, or what we are going to use for the rest of the working group activity in all of the focus areas. So if you have any idea of a use case that could be interesting, just scam and open an issue. Even if it is just a, just a title, 
I and, and other people are going to help you to convert that into, you, into a use case. And uh, second, we are starting to visit all the focus areas, starting with uh, code development. So if you have any uh, stakeholder on that and you want to contribute somehow with ideas or something else, just come. And again, we have an issue for discussing, come and join the discussion. And that's all. I think the approach makes perfect sense to me. And in doing the DNI call yesterday, we were also briefly thinking about use cases or user reports or something that um, that sounds very similar to what you're doing. And the chain from developing from the use cases down to the metrics and through the questions and that, that just makes sense to me. So. Yeah, I've been following that and I like what you're doing. Okay, thank you. Any other topic that you may want to discuss or something? We should probably give an update on the DNI working group, but I was waiting for Gayfark to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. If you want me to, I can. Yeah, yeah, go for it. We are, um, so after the conferences, we have been a little slow in continuing our work, but we still have more resource pages to complete. They're all, they all exist as issues in our GitHub right now and as Google Docs to start working on it. The, the main conversation we have right now is what is it that we want to do? What are our next steps? One of the reasons is that Emma is uh, reducing her involvement next year. And so we want to uh, figure out how we as a group are going to move forward. So that's been the discussion yesterday. Did I miss anything, Don? The only other thing we talked about was we worked on finalizing some proposals for DNI for ChaosCon and for the FOSDEM community dev room. And I think I think we're also going to submit. Um, Daniel has a talk for the Python community dev room about um, diversity and inclusion in the Python community. It's a redo of a talk that he did at a, I think something more more local. So it looks like those are the things we're going to submit around FOSDEM for for DNI. Awesome, thank you. One of the, one, one thing that I shared yesterday during our DNI meeting is that I'm conducting interviews with um, people from the open source ecosystem about DNI metrics and that those interviews are producing some really interesting insights that we haven't thought about before. One of them is sponsorship in open source projects. And I'm not talking about sponsorship in terms of money, but people sponsoring other people. Uh, similar to mentorship, but with mentorship, you only provide guidance, you show where resources are, you help push through problems. With sponsorship, the sponsor actually puts their reputation on the line and helps promote their sponsee and brings them up in conversations and tries to give them more responsibilities within the community because they want to advance them and help them move along in the community. So that is something that came out of my interviews. Interesting. Okay, any other thing that you may want to talk about? No, I don't have anything else on my mind right now. Okay, then we are done, I think. So 
Thank you very much and have a very good Thanksgiving there in the States. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Talk to you next week. See you next Bye. week. Bye.